We all want our portfolio to have better returns with lower risk, but what is the ideal percentage of each asset to be able to achieve this? Asset allocation is one of the things that puzzle me and you and some great investors. So today, let's talk about asset allocation and what will be the optimal combination by using a two fund portfolio as an example. My name is Irene. Now let's get started. So what is asset allocation? Basically, it is how you divide your investment portfolio into different asset classes, either stocks, fixed income, cash, or even crypto. If you invest in one asset class, for example, an equity ETF like VAS or VGS, which we're going to cover in a minute, asset allocation means what is the proportion of each ETF that you're going to buy and hold. And there's one thing for sure, everyone's optimal asset allocation will be different because we all have our own financial goals, our own risk tolerance, either our ability or willingness to lose money, as well as our investing horizon. Typically, you would want to allocate more defensive, lower risk assets when you are closer to your retirement. So there are two main reasons that why asset allocation matters more than we think. First, based on Morningstar, 90% of the variability of returns and 100% of the absolute level of return is explained by asset allocation, which means that my portfolio will perform very similarly with others with the same asset allocation, regardless of the specific investments that I choose. Second, investing actually is an exchange of risks for returns. A higher return is not possible to attain in efficient markets over a long period of time without accepting higher risks. So we always accept greater returns for assets with higher risks. If we don't take enough risks with them, what we can cope with, we may not get high returns to reach our goal. On the other hand, if we take on too much risks that we shouldn't, we might not have enough money when we need to access it. And asset allocation can help to solve this issue by ensuring that a portfolio is ideally set to reach our financial goal. Since investing is a trading risk for returns, let's look at the risk return trade-off chart. The x-axis represents the standard deviation, which is a statistical metric to measure how an investment fluctuates from its expected return. And the smaller the standard deviation is, the less volatile the investment is. The big standard deviation means that the return of the investment is more dispersed, therefore riskier. So imagine we have all the possible portfolios that are waiting for us to invest. And each one of them have their own risk and return based on their historical data. And we call it investment opportunity set. And the pool is rather large, but we would only want to invest in the portfolio on the left curve. Why? Because only these portfolios can provide the same return, but at lower risk. And this curve is called minimum variance frontier. The leftmost point on the minimum variance frontier is the portfolio with the minimum variance among all the portfolio sets, and which is called the global minimum variance portfolio. If you're like me or most of the investors who are risk averse, you would only pick the curve that lies above and to the right of the global minimum variance portfolio, which is called the Marco Woods Efficient Frontier. Because if we imagine a hypothetical vertical line here, and portfolios on Marco Woods Efficient Frontier provide higher return with the same level of risk. So along the Marco Woods Efficient Frontier, if you're more conservative, you may be just happy with as allocation of the global minimum variance point. As it travels to northeast, the, um, the more aggressive the portfolio will be because it will provide higher return with higher risk. Now, keep this in mind, and I will look at a real example portfolio that consists of two assets, the VAS and VGS. I know many Aussie investors hold VAS and VGS as their core portfolio, so let's use these two ETF as the two assets and see what would be the optimal asset allocation. To get a portfolio frontier, you will need to have two metrics calculated based on different asset ratio combinations. One is the portfolio expected return. Second is the risk, which is the portfolio standard deviation. So to calculate the portfolio expected return, we follow the formula here. To calculate the portfolio standard deviation, we follow the formula here. Because we only have two assets here, so it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. I use the five-year annual return and standard deviation as well as the correlation of VAS and VGS from Morningstar Premium. I use the efficient frontier template that I downloaded from CFI, which uh, basically follows the formula that I just mentioned. So W1 is the percentage that VAS takes in the portfolio. And just to give you a quick example, it's actually not as complex as it looks. 
Uh, let's take VA as 10% and VGA as 90%, for example. The portfolio standard deviation equals and portfolio expected return equals. So after plotting this data, we're getting this portfolio frontier and we can see point A is 100% VAS and point B is 100% VGS. And by adding more and more VGS to VAS, the portfolio is actually getting optimized because it becomes less volatile and the return is improved. If you look at the five-year historical data of the two ETFs, and VGS is actually a more efficient asset with lower risk but higher return. So that makes sense, right? To find the optimal asset allocation, we should only look at the Michael Woods efficient frontier, which is this north curve, and which means that we have found optimal as an allocation, which is VAS takes about none. So surprisingly, for investors who can bear the standard deviation of 15.7%, which is about the five year volatility of SP 500 index fund, that it fluctuates something like this. Are you better off investing in VGS only? Is this surprising you? And I know a lot of investors that they've been saying 50-50 or 60-40, but actually when I got the result, this actually surprised me a little. Just to maximize the sharp ratio, we definitely would only want to invest in VGS, but let's put the diversification point of view into the consideration because VGS is the top 300 Aussie companies and VGS actually is excluding Australian companies. So just for that point of view, I think it's better to have VGS and VAS together in one portfolio. What if we have more than three assets in our portfolio, which is the case that we all have? To find the optimal asset allocation will require a little bit more effort and additional tool, such as if you can do it in Excel, you need the solver function and you need to get the expected return and standard deviation of each asset and the covariance between each asset and set the solver to maximize sharp ratio. And there are YouTube tutorials that teach how to use solver to find optimal asset allocation. If you're in the US or you only invest in the US investment products, then I'll recommend a website called Portfolio Visualizer that it has the portfolio optimization tool that you can use. Unfortunately, it cannot track any ASX products. So for Aussie investors, alternatively, you can use Morningstar Premium Tool that it has a portfolio X-ray, which will give you a current portfolio analysis. Again, the result that I'm showing you today is based on the data that until today and the standard deviation and expected returns of the two ETFs will change over time as well as their correlation. And I'm sure you have other assets that sit in your portfolio as well, and that will affect your optimal asset allocation. So don't take 100% in VG as, as your financial advice. So I'm curious about how many assets in your portfolio and let's count ETF as one. I'll leave your number below and let me know if you have any questions. My name is Irene, I'll see you next week. Bye.